I know, I know. I've been MIA for quite a while now. I've been working on something big, which I can't wait to share with you guys, but it's been taking up all of my time. What was initially supposed to be just taking a few weeks off to focus ended up turning into a few months. But I'm alive and everything is good. I do appreciate some of you checking in on me. I haven't taken so much time off from YouTube. I now have all these ideas in my head and they're just piling up and I just need to get them out. So that means lots of good content for you guys coming up. It's good to be back. It really is. I, I enjoy this stuff. Now I had something else planned for my first video back. But then I watched the live Tesla Cybertruck event. And after my initial reaction, all I could think was extrude loft chamfer. <laughs> I need to Fusion 360 this. The low poly count on the vehicle makes it a great exercise if you always wanted to design a car in Fusion 360 but knew it would be too complicated. So huge thanks to Elon Musk for designing a car that those starting out with Fusion 360 can actually make. Alright, let's jump right into it and see how to tackle this. Here's the completed design in the rendering environment. So after I completed the model, I brought it in to take advantage of the rendering capabilities of Fusion 360 and see how the materials and appearances actually look. Uh, I think it came out really nice actually with the stainless steel body here. I've got the bulletproof glass or uh, I guess just regular glass here with the Fusion rubber tires. Um, I like it. So you can see here I created different sceneries. If you haven't played around with the rendering environment, go ahead and do so. It's kind of fun. Even if you don't know what you're doing, just add some materials and bring it in here and see what you can create. All right, we're going to switch now to the design environment so I can show you what we've got. Now, I was trying to think of how to approach this video because if I go step by step, this can easily become a, over an hour long video. So instead of doing that, I thought I would just kind of go through the main parts here, parts that I feel are important um, that I want to kind of share with, with you guys. So if you're new to Fusion 360, um, the way you're going to want to approach this is it's going to give you a chance to see a lot of the tools that are available to you and just kind of keep that in your back pocket so you know when you need to do something you can think of oh yeah there's this loft tool and I remember it works like this you know then you can look it up and if you're already modeling with Fusion 360 it's just great to see other approaches to modeling if you look up here you can see uh, this is actually my third time making this model and each time I've done something different so even within the same model I uh, we'll tackle it different ways um, just depending on where my thought process is and I actually enjoy getting that from you guys if you see me do something and you're thinking oh I would have done that this other way leave that in the comments because I enjoy reading those and you may have an approach that may work better that I just didn't even think of all right let's begin and because this is a cyber truck we can actually go back in time so we're gonna go right back to the beginning before there was cyber truck there was a canvas so we'll move this one step over and i'll turn on the little eye here and let's go to this actually go to a front view and this is a workflow that i love doing with fusion 360 and that is to bring a picture and reference it as you're creating your sketch so to do that you just go to insert and down to canvas you select your image you bring it right in and then choose what plane you want to bring that in click ok brings the image in and then all you have to do next is calibrate it and to do that you right click and go to calibrate and to calibrate you simply enter two points and you enter the distance between those two points so in this case I looked up the length of the cyber truck and depending on the configuration it said between 210 and 250 inches so I just picked something in the middle and I wrote 230 inches and because I'm in millimeters I actually have to write the word inches so anyway I write that it will change it to whatever it is in millimeters but it scales it so then you're working with the right scale so Great little tip there on your workflow if you didn't know you could do that. Okay, let's go over one step. And then the next step is where I use this canvas to basically uh, trace my lines. So 
here I'm just simply using the line tool and I just went and created my lines here based on where I know I was going to need to extrude and you can see here I kept it pretty loose I'm not going for exact dimensions here I didn't even dimension anything um, that way it gave me the ability to come back and just change things so if I needed to make this wider or longer I can just come back and make these tweaks let me undo those but just left it undefined giving me flexibility there okay the next step was that first extrusion that I did so let's turn this a little bit we'll remove that canvas and I just took this and created a simple extrusion here just went out half the distance so I did 40 inches there don't make more work for yourself by modeling something twice that's symmetric you know model half of it and then mirror it later which I will do so always look for symmetry okay we'll go another step and here I just brought in that second body that wedge for the top and here I brought it in as a separate body so I should have two bodies body one and body two and then the next step here, if you take a look, as that's a little move icon here. This is, I think, a very underappreciated tool in Fusion 360. So if I move that over one, you see it's going to take that face and just move it over. So the way I did that was, let me go back and let's untoggle that sketch. I simply right click and you go to move slash copy. You'll get the move copy dialog box. We're going to change this from bodies to face. And I'm just going to bring this over. It's important here that it highlights the face that you want moved. So be careful because it can either be, you know, the one you want or the one adjacent to it. I want the top one. So I'm going to just move my mouse a little bit up so that gets highlighted. Click to select it. It's blue. And then I can just take this little widget here and just bring that in. So it's a quick way to amend faces. Uh, I just went with 25 degrees there or negative 25. Just kind of took a guess. And that worked. So that's what I did there. And honestly, when I saw the unveiling of the Cybertruck, I thought, wow, this whole thing can be modeled using the Move Faces tool. Let's go over one more. And this is the extrude feature there. And what I want to show here is I took advantage of the start from object here. So if you don't know what that is when you extrude something the default is start from profile plane and so if i change it to that you can see that the extrusion does not go parallel with this angled face here but if i change it from profile plane to from object so from object and i'll select my object here and now if i go in you can see that that extrusion is parallel to that face. So really great feature there to take advantage of. All right, let's go up one more. And I just basically did that again, but this time only selected the window parts. Okay, these next set of steps here is to create this sweep here for the fender part here. So this is this shape here that just kind of, I just had it go all the way across. Um, of the car here and the way I did that was to create a plane here so what I did was I went to construct plane at angle and then cho chose a line here and then rotated it 90 degrees and used that to create a plane and then I used that plane to create a sketch so you can see here I have a little scratch a sketch where I created that little rectangle piece I created another sketch where I just simply projected this line here that I wanted that profile here to follow. And then I used the sweep tool by going to create down to sweep, selecting, whoops, selecting this profile and then selecting this path here and just sweeping that across to give me that fender. And now you'll notice like everything is not exact. Let me just cancel out of that. Um, you know, I took a few liberties here. And then this section right here, this part was uh, a bit tricky because I wanted to connect this face here to this face. So it's one of those parts that is not exact, but it did the trick. I just did a simple loft tool there. So I went to create down to loft, select this face here and then just select this guy and then that went ahead and connected it so if I move over one you'll see how that works 
and I think it did the job, <laughs> honestly. I mean, there's a more complicated way to go about it and make it perfect, but I think for my purposes there, that was fine. Okay, then I created a, another sketch. Let's see what that was. Oh, and then we we're into the wheel part. So, and the wheel was pretty straightforward. Let me bring that canvas in. Because you can see here, it's just some hexagons and a circle and a rectangle here. And just a few extrusions there. Let me turn this way. I extruded it out to get my tire and then just extruded those parts out for this piece right here. Now, this is another one that I didn't do it exactly, but kind of just, you know, went with the spirit of the design, I guess. Uh, I took this bar here, um, put some chamfers on the end, and then use a circular pattern to give me three of those. So let's go over that. And then I had three, and then I used my combine tool, so just uh, modify, combine, to combine them into one body. Some more extrusions just to get those shapes out. And then I move the copy of that wheel to the back. The way you move, you just right click, move copy, place this here. You have to make sure you click here where it says create copy and then you can now go ahead and move a copy and just get it into place. So all right, now that I've got that wheel there, the next operation is a mirror. So that's half of the truck, right? And I don't need to do the same thing on the other side. All I have to do is go to create, down to mirror. I simply selected everything, selected in my mirror plane, which would be this other side. And there I have it have the other side there so I can just click let me cancel out of that and just move my timeline up to see it but you can see these are all separate bodies so the next uh, few features here are combines that I did to just combine everything into one body and next for the windshield I just created a sketch on the windshield here so let's remove all these and this was just a three-point arc that I did here and then I just extruded that inwards, only like a few millimeters actually, just to kind of give me that separate face where I can then go ahead and put the glass parents in. So let's go over one. I did the same thing with the back. Next, I got a fillet. I think this is like the only fillet here. Oh man, there's one more here. That was the tires. But the only other fillet that uh, is in the truck body and the only one that's actually part of the body is this right here, which I did for the lights. Um, that's basically it and I filleted this part here so that's just simply going to uh, modify down the fillet and just selecting these three edges and I went in I forgot what I used but I think it was like 50. Finally appearances this is really great because I got to go in and choose for the metal let's see we go to metal and there's an option for stainless steel so if I go down, we got uh, right here, right above steel, there's stainless steel. And I, I used the stainless steel polished. And I added that in. And for the glass, I did a dark um, colored density glass. Wait, yeah, I did this one and just went with a dark glass. You know, the rubber for the tires. Rubber you can find under other. And then go down to rubber. And you know, there's some different types of rubber. Um, and then so I yeah, added those there's e even a uh, emissive here where you can do lights different colored lights and different brightnesses and I did that for my lights so that's it that's the design there basically I wanted to get the general design out and show how a design like this is very doable in Fusion 360 even if you're not like an expert model or you haven't been doing this for years and years um, even for you know, I'd, I'd say like an advanced beginner, you know, can, can do this kind of stuff. Um, you know, once you get the main tools down, you can uh, easily, you know, jump into a design like this. All right, I hope you enjoyed that and hopefully got something valuable out of the video. If you did, hit that like button for me. Leave your comments and questions below and let me know if you learned something new or which part you would approach differently. I'm providing the Fusion 360 file for you guys, and that's the .f3d file, so not the STL file, the actual F3D file, which you can import into Fusion 360 and actually play around with the design. The link for the file download is below. Alright guys, like I said, it's good to be back. I'll see you next week.